definitely inflation is a big problem right now. Really unfortunate when you're trying to like first learn your way to like managing your money because then you're like, oh, I got this paycheck and then, oh, my paycheck is gone. It's been three days. Yeah, I think it might be feasibly financially impossible to yeah. live just day to day while going to school, day to day while working, day to day and trying to sustain yeah. your life. It just can't happen unless you have some form of support, be it loans, be it family, be it whatever it needs to be. I don't think it's possible. I physically do not think it could happen. I think that it might make us like more financially responsible, hopefully. Hopefully not like my grandmother who grew up in the depression, but we'll see. In order to understand inflation and the ways in which it can affect students, I spoke with Professor of Finance Matt Sheridan about the current economic climate. Inflation is goods and services becoming more expensive, which in turn erodes the value of purchasing power. Earlier this year, we hit a nine handle on inflation, 9.1%. That was the highest inflation rate that the United States has seen in over 40 years. Now, there is quite a few inputs that are going into the high inflation. Um, some of this is food prices are going up. We've seen energy prices uh, skyrocket. Uh, oil was up tremendously over this year, although it's come down quite a bit. We're, we're almost about where we were at the start of the year, but natural gas prices are still high, and we're going into the busiest months there. We're seeing rent prices going up, as well as home prices hitting an all-time high. Uh, wages have been going up, coming out of the financial crisis of 08 into 09. We hardly saw wages averaging over 2%, just a little over 2%. Now we're seeing 5 to 6%, which typically is a good thing when people are seeing their wages go up. But unfortunately, inflation's gone up higher than wages, so it hasn't had that offsetting effect. The goal of the Federal Reserve, America's central bank, to bring down those inflationary pressures. The Fed has a dual mandate. One is full employment. We're there right now. We have an unemployment rate at 3.7 percent. The second part is stable prices, and they have an inflation target of 2 percent. We're far off from that. So they are becoming less accommodative to the market. They've gone on a series of rate increases. The most recent one was three quarters of a percent this month. Um, it's likely that they'll do another three quarters of a percent rate increase in November. And all of this is to try to slow the economy, slow demand, and bring down inflation. And unfortunately, they're gonna cause economic pain and economic damage. They're gonna cause the unemployment rate to go up, which will put downward pressure on wages. They're making borrowing costs go up, which for housing uh, can bring down housing prices. So the, the, there's a lot of measures that the Fed is taking specifically that can address some of this inflation, but they have blunt instruments. Uh, they, they really can't do this without causing some economic pain. Now, there's other areas that are kind of outside of their control, like the oil market. And this is a global market, and it is something that is on the psyche of Americans because every day you drive by gas stations, you see high gas prices. Hopefully, the Fed is successful in crushing inflation. It's going to be extremely painful in the short term. But the repercussions of not beating inflation destroys wealth over time. I sought out students to get a clearer picture of inflation's real-world effects. First, I spoke with Blade Mitchell, a junior at Ohio State. We rent from Pella uh, Company. Um, they do our. They own the house that we rent from. Um, I have about six or five roommates, or six of us total in the house, um, and it comes out to about five hundred and twenty dollars a month. Pretty much all of my bills I have to pay for myself, uh, and I work on campus at Thompson Library. Um, so that the hours that I work cover for literally everything, so housing, food, etc. My position is $14 an hour, and I work about 20 hours a week. It's definitely stressful if for some reason something comes up, like I get sick or I have to go home or something and I can't get enough hours in um, each week. 
like I might get worried about if I can pay rent um, that month. I'm sure that would be an even worse issue of just not being able to focus on your schoolwork, which is the reason we're all here, because you're worried about having a roof over your head. Um, and then food, for sure. Um, not so much that like I struggle to buy food, but enough that it's noticeable and concerning if it continues to go up in price. I also spoke with Cassidy Jones, a junior at Ohio State, about the challenges of balancing work and academics and how inflation has heightened financial stress. Well, me and my girlfriend live together. We live here at Runaway Bay. Well, we looked at all the prices on campus and we were like, that's a lot. We pay about 12, 1300 a month. It's it's a lot. And then we pay utilities on top of that. We pay for water, we pay for electric, and we pay for gas. To cover all of the actual living expenses, not just me, me and her both have to cover all of our living expenses. We pay for groceries here, we pay for pet litter and food and all that stuff. The first thing I think of is gas prices. Obviously, they're so much higher. Even just being in Columbus, it's more expensive. And then just the last couple months, obviously it's been more expensive. Like maybe it's going down like a little bit, but overall it's been like a dollar more than when I started driving, which is very unfortunate. And even Kroger has been like jacking up their prices and it's a little sad because you know, I don't know, I just want my grapes for $1.99. It's just not gonna happen anymore. I work at the Ohio Union. I just became a manager, so I pick it $15 even right now. And over the school year, I work 10 hours a week. And even that's like stressful and I'm having a hard time maintaining it. So it's like you switch between being stressed about school to being stressed about your home life. But I guess it's a part of being an adult and learning to balance all the things together. It's difficult though, definitely. Uh, it was a very big contributor to me not doing summer classes and I'm probably not gonna graduate on time. I'm probably gonna have to take an extra year to do classes just because I have to make money to pay for rent. And I definitely could not work full time while doing classes because having classes is a full-time job. Anybody can tell you that. So having two full-time jobs is stressful. Having three is unmanageable. Though inflation poses financial challenges for students that compound with academic stress, university resources like Scarlet and Gray Financial and the Buckeye Food Alliance can help alleviate some financial pressures. Scarlet and Gray Financial is the university's financial education program. So myself, along with a staff of 30 to 35 student volunteers, meet with students um, to help them learn more about their financial lives, right? And so, uh, this can either be students who come in for one-on-one -on -one appointments because they have a specific concern, like, you know, how do I better manage my monthly cash flow, or it can be folks who are just curious about a subject, so we get a lot of interest in things like investing, students who are currently in school but are thinking about their debt repayment strategies after they graduate, exploratory conversations about credit and credit cards. Uh, we also do group workshops for various folks in the university. Um, and have a late fee waiver program for folks who have received a university late fee because they paid their tuition late. With students, their lifestyle is extremely variable seasonally, right? So in the summer, typically, they're working full time. They're doing something else, maybe academically or professionally. During the school year, they're not typically working very much, right, because they're full-time students. So, and then they're often supplementing that with either savings or help from a family or financial aid things that folks don't generally think of as income. One of the things I, I always try to get across to students is that your income is a little tricky to figure out as a student. And it's often an asset you are drawing from, like your savings. It's often financial aid, be it loan, uh, loans or grants. And so I always encourage them to think of their income, to budget their income as well, to make sure that whatever asset they're drawing from is sustainable over the course of a semester. So it's not mid-November and now you're out of money and you're taking finals and midterms and experiencing financial stress on top of academic stress. Buckeye Food Alliance really came about when a couple of students saw some research being done on campus that at the time showed about 15% of undergraduate students um, were experiencing food insecurity and you know, to them that was just way too high. And so um, BFA really started as a, a student organization run by students for students. Our mission is pretty simple and sweet. <laughs> it's to really make, you know, do what we can to reduce the impacts of food insecurity here on our campus for our students um, and really to make sure that no Buckeye goes hungry. 
to any other food pantry, we'd see a direct food service uh, operation where we're um, working with you know community and local partners to ensure that um, we can provide students who uh, may be experiencing food insecurity uh, food at no cost to them. So that's really our primary service. Um, we do operate almost entirely off of the work of student volunteers. Um, they're phenomenal and um, their passion to give back to their fellow Buckeyes is really what keeps us going. And just anybody just affording <laughs> what the economy looks like at the moment, um, I think every little bit helps. And so um, if we can do anything to, to lower a grocery bill or to let students move money around to afford electricity or their, afford their gas bill, that's really what we're there to do is to help support students in any way we can to help just make that a little bit easier for folks. Finally, I spoke with the president of undergraduate student government, Andrew Pierce, to find out about wages for students employed by the university and what USG is doing to advocate for students on financial issues. So currently USG is working to infuse student representation to campus conversations around student wages. We know that, for example, the Office of Student Life recently had a Tiger team dedicated to looking at wages within the Office of Student Life, which houses 90% um, of student workers, whether it be with dining or housing or recreational facilities. Um, that Tiger team was primarily filled up with staff and very high-level executives within the Office of Student Life. Now we are looking to infuse those decision-making um, spaces with students that have experience not only with being a student worker, but also a financial background to understand concepts such as CPI, um, staff compressions, and other concepts. During the campaign, I identified this as a very big um, topic that's very salient with the student community, but I also think nationally everybody's talking about wages and how is it keeping on track with inflation. So I don't think you can't be a student worker or a worker in general in this country and not be focused on wages. For the Office of Student Life, it's $10.70. Um, knowing at least with this dining services, they recently increased their wages by 20% over the past year. Um, but also looking at average wages versus minimum, um, very different across various units. So I think when you're talking about student wages, historically we're always told that, oh, work your way through college. Well, that's not really the case anymore. You can't work your way through college. Um, so I think it's a holistic approach from majors, um, scholarships, but also um, jobs. Though college students are not immune to inflation, many remain resilient in the face of financial hardships. Resources like Scarlet and Gray Financial and the Buckeye Food Alliance offer support, and student leaders work to advocate on behalf of students. This is Celia Andrews reporting for The Lantern.